today we're going to be talking about the Brave Browser and how publishers get in on this game as well as how each of the individual end users get to help out their favorite content creators. But first, my name is Steve Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and this entire episode is based around a browser, a centerpiece, and it would only be true to my word and idea that I actually put it in the image. So give me a second. Welcome to the Brave Browser. We have a few tabs open that we'll be going through. And the first thing I want you to all know is for every single one of you, you can get the Brave Browser by going to brave.com and downloading it. It is free. It is based on Chromium. So there's no point in me showing how it navigates the internet. It is basically the same thing as Chrome with a few different caveats. One, there's no dark theme. That's my first gripe. Two, automatically blocks all ads. It has three modes, blocks ads, allows ads, and then also replaces them with their own ads, which I am completely against, which is my second gripe, because that is code injection, which is anti-net neutral in my own opinion. That is of course my opinion, but I actually don't like the idea of people injecting code into my own site. So that is what we have to deal with. That is what it's basically out. Now let's talk about the content creators. A lot of you are content creators first so that you know how to get in on this game. Everybody has the potential of making money from this as long as you are registered. So you will have to click the publisher link that's up here in the top right, which will bring you to this page. Publishers equal partners. That's what they're saying. You'll have to scroll down. We'll ignore that thing for a second and click the get verified now link, which will brave bring you to Brave Payments, where you click the Get Started link and create your accounts and add each of your YouTube channels and websites themselves, which will allow you to finally become a publisher with only one more step, getting an Uphold account, which is also free, which allows you to go from currency to cryptocurrency and back again. I know it says from US dollars to Bitcoins in seconds, but there are a lot more than just US dollars and Bitcoins in there. On top of others, we got BAT, Bitcoin and Litecoin and Erythium at the same time that are available in this. Now, let's go back to the part that is important. This option. This option is called Brave Payments. I'm gonna show you in the preferences where it is, obviously, because you already see it. But what happens is once you are using this browser, you can add cryptocurrency to this browser to allow you to fund any of the websites that you are interested in funding each and every single month. It's not required, but this is one of those ways that you get to actually help those content creators continue making their content. Let's keep something in mind. When the internet first came out, we had the option of having paid sites or free sites. Nobody wants to pay for anything. So we got the advertising model from TV, which is why we have so many ad block solutions and so many bad advertising on the internet, because that's how people make money. So this is the way that we finally help people make money. And the cool thing is, is you can mine some of this stuff yourself. So you don't really have to worry too much. You can buy it. And by the way, you don't have to buy whole coins. You can buy fractions of coins so that you can help your favorite content creators. So it doesn't mean you have to make yourself broke to help out any of your favorite content creators. And just keep something in mind. A lot of the time people are making less than a cent per person visiting the website. So obviously if you got a thousand people visiting a website generating one cent per visit, it adds up. And that's exactly how it works for YouTube channels as well. Each person is worth a fraction of a cent. So this is one of the ways that you get to help them out. Then of course, for all those end users out there, because there's no point showing you how the browser works, it's based on the Chromium project, which means it's like using Chrome. We've got the preferences. Starting with the general, which is obviously, you know, nothing to write home about. Search, which is, by the way, not too bad. You have all these options, which will allow you to actually load up the ones that you want. And obviously the default is Google, which I always use anyway. So we'll leave it at that. Tabs, which is also nothing to write home about. 
We got security, which is, by the way, the first thing that we should worry about, private data. The ability you can turn all these on and actually have it delete all of this every time you close the browser. Password manager, if there's no LastPass, there's no Steve, by the way. The ability to autofill data, which, by the way, keep in mind that you end up deleting it if you turn that on. You can always allow, always deny or always ask various options here. You've got the do not track option that even my website doesn't follow, but I have this belief that if your website has a username and login, then not tracking your own users is besides the point. You know, you kind of are tracking the users that are logged in on your website. Then we also have this neat little thing called strict site isolation. Remember that Intel AMD and everything else problem that every processor in the world has a problem with? Well, this is one of those ways of mitigating risks. So it keeps all the websites stored in their own processes so that there's no data leakage whatsoever. Then we have payments, which I just showed you through the other example, extensions, which you will see there is not that much, plugins where there's only two options, the Adobe Flash and the Google Widevine, which I obviously didn't turn on, shields, which is where a lot of the meat and potatoes of this program comes from, the ability to block ads, the ability to block third-party cookies, which is important because it's usually related to advertisements, by the way, and of course, Blocking third-party fingerprinting, which a lot of people might not necessarily know, but this means it's returning no metadata whatsoever of various things that would make you easily trackable and, how do we say, uniquely identifiable. Cookies are one aspect of how websites can track you. Fingerprinting is another. You have the ability to force HTTPS everywhere, which means if it has a SSL certificate, it will be actually turning that on and of course the options of blocking phishing and malware which is good for people who are not necessarily paying attention it happens to everyone admit it and then of course you have advanced settings which again not really all that much to write home about so what do i think of this program well let's go back to their website they make a nice looking website. They make a very simple, easy to use, right to their own belief system browser. My only gripes with it were the fact that there are no dark themes and that they inject their own advertisements into web pages without anything that can allow a publisher to either opt in or opt out. But besides that, it does come as a option that can be turned on. It's ad blocked by default. Most people don't change default settings. So I think this browser might actually have a chance at over, at least overtaking something like Microsoft Edge, because we all know how horrible that is, but it is something that you might want to think about. And if you are a publisher, you might seriously have to think about this. The more people use these kinds of browsers, the more likely you're going to be losing money anyway. So you might as well register your own YouTube channels and websites with this program so that you can still get the money that you would be losing otherwise. So I want you to like this episode if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, share with those that you think benefit from this, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, email me at ask at tqwayweekly.com or go to my website tqwayweekly.com for everything else. And if you want to follow this show on Twitter, it is now at tqwayweekly for this show at zaxis for myself. And if you want to make this show better, go to patreon.com slash TQA weekly and become a patron today. Patrons make this show better by actually directly contributing to this show. And therefore they get these episodes 24 to 48 hours in advance of everyone else. You can also follow it and get the episodes two days later as part of the public stream on there. So thank you for those people out there that are either patrons or following on my Patreon. You make this a lot better for me to do. So thank you for watching and goodbye.